All right, here we go with how to do a derivative of a polynomial, which is the most common thing you're going to experience. I like this name, <laughs> derivative of Amazon is Amazon Prime. Get it? Because we always write derivatives as primes, don't we? Or at least not always. But let's say we have y, then in the derivative, we can write it as y primed. Or we could say f of x. Say like this right here. We could say the derivative is f primed of x and so on. Um, what I want to show you right now is uh, this is maybe the most important thing that I do in all these videos on calculus. This video right here, if you don't understand after I'm done, don't go and look at any of the other videos I've done until you understand this, because this is going to be the key to it. This is going to be the, the whole key here, is how to do derivatives by hand. At least it's the key to derivatives, maybe not for the integrals, but this is going to be really, really important. I'm going to show you how to do stuff. But keep in mind, for right now, let's just see this as a game, because I'm going to show you part of it. So just these are just going to be the rules of the game, okay? But the goal, the eventual goal is going to be, how can we find the gradient of a tangent for example, at this point right here, but without needing to use two points and without needing to draw the tangent line. We're just going to try to say, like, what's the gradient doing right here? Do you notice it's some sort of slopey, you know, if I had to draw a tangent line right now, it'd be some line going like this. Let's see here. Let me just try to draw myself a tangent line just to see, just try to estimate what I think it's doing. It looks like something like, doesn't look like it's doing like that. So at any point, if I want to find out what's the gradient of this right here without having to draw it, without having to use two points, how can we do this? That's going to be our goal. It's going to do it at a point. So the first goal is to find out how do we do a derivative at any point. This is much more powerful. Because see, this right here says this only works at this point. I'm going to show you a little trick that's going to show you how to find the derivative anywhere. And then all you'll have to do is just put in the point you want. So that'll be the easy part. So the hard part is going to be how to actually do this. Well, it depends on how you find it hard or not, but this is the key point. This right here, this equation, this is going to be in your formula booklet. It says if f of x is written as x to some exponent n, the derivative will be this. Ready? So we're going to write it like this. f prime of x, which is how we say the derivative. Right? Just like this, Amazon, Amazon prime. Well, we have f, we have f primed. That's how we say the derivative. It's going to be equal to, watch carefully, this n comes in front. So it becomes n times x, and the exponent, which was n, now goes 1 less. So it's n minus 1. This is it. This is everything. This is all of it. So I just want to say this is the most important thing right here. This is going to be, we're going to be using this so much, I can almost guarantee you're going to end up memorizing this. You won't need this equation because you're going to use it so much. So here's the pro tip. If you want to say, how do you actually use it? Here's a little trick for you. Ah, look, if you have something to an exponent, the exponent comes in front. Look, see, it went, whoop, it goes right in front. And then you make the new exponent one less than it was before. So if it was like to the five, it becomes four. If it was eight, it becomes seven. If it was zero, ooh, we've got some interesting things going on. We're going to figure that out. So that's all I want us to concentrate on is just doing this polynomial derivative. So I'm going to give you tons of examples. You're going to see if you look, we're going to do lots, 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 lots of examples, okay? Just to show you how to deal with these. But we're going to just use this one idea. How do we find the gradient at any point? See, because later we can just put in, all right, f primed at 1 is just going to be blah, blah, blah. You'll see. That'll be the easy part. The hard part, or the more complicated part for a lot of students, is dealing with this. So let's start off with baby steps then. So this first one, if I have x squared, what do I do for f primed? I use this rule. I say that, well, the exponent becomes 1, uh, sorry, it comes in front, so it becomes 2 times x. And then the exponent becomes 1 less, so if it was a 2, what's 2 minus 1? I'm just trying to show you formally what happens, right? So what do we do then? So f primed of x equals, it's important to say what you're doing. So I'm doing f primed, I'm doing the derivative. Well, what's 2 minus 1? It's just 1, isn't it? So I could say 2x to the 1. But we're a bit lazy in math, aren't we? We don't really say the 1. So we're just going to say finally then, so we're going to say f primed of x equals 2x. So this is it. We're done. So what did we just learn from now? Well, if it goes to a 1, we don't really write the 1. So that's I'm trying to just focus on what we've just learned. So this is the, this is at least the answer to the first one. Not bad, right? Then you can just find it at a point. If I want f primed at 1, I would say 2 times 1, and that's how I would get 2. If I want f primed at 8, though, I just put an 8 here. If I want f primed at negative 500, if 
but it's going to be negative 500 times 2, which is negative 1,000. Isn't that cool? It tells me it's really, really steep and going down. All right, let's look at what happens if it looks like a Y. Well, it's just as easy, except what am I doing here? I'm showing you what happens if you have a number in front. Well, you deal with it like you normally would. Watch carefully. We say dy dx. This is the notation we're using this time. And, well, the 4 comes in front, but there's already a 3 there. So what do you think we do? Well, we're going to multiply them 4 times 3 times x to the power of, and what's 4 minus 1? Now, I'm just going to show you all the steps for once, but after this I'm going to stop showing you this upper step, and I'm going to stop showing you this one. We're going to skip that. Hopefully you'll be okay with it. So 4 times 3 is 12. x to the power of, well, three, uh, 4 minus 1 is just 3. So there we go. So I can say, therefore, that dy dx is equal to 12x cubed. Do you get it? We're just playing this game for now, okay? We're not doing much with derivatives yet. We're going to do a lot of things with them later. But just so you know, you have to be able to do this thing called a derivative. So you start off with 3x to the 4th. The 4 comes in front. becomes 12, right, because they multiply. And this becomes 1 less. All right, that was pretty easy, hopefully. But what do we do with negative exponents? So I want to remind you what we do here, because here's my pro tip for you, is we're going to look at these things now that look more complicated, and we're going to try to make them more calculus friendly. So what do I mean to make it more calculus friendly? I mean to make it where you see some exponent. You have to have it written like something to an exponent. That's calculus friendly. So in this case right here, Let's just remember what happens here. Do you know that 1 over x can be written as x to the power of minus 1? Although this looks nicer, this looks more gross, this is much more calculus friendly because I can use that trick now with exponents. The exponent comes in front, becomes 1 less. What about 1 over x squared? What does that give you? Well, it's x to the power of negative 2. See, this negative 2 tells you it's the x that's on the bottom, and it's to the power of negative 2. Or, sorry x is to the power of 2 here, we can write it to the power of negative 2 if we write it on top like this. The way I think of it is I imagine I cover up this negative 2 and I just imagine this thing just went down to the bottom. Let's see about what do we do about 7 over x cubed? Well the 7 is still on top, so the 7 remains. It just multiplies x and it's the x to the 3 that's on the bottom, so that's why I make it x to the minus 3. See what I do? The 7 didn't have to be to some weird exponents. 7 was on top. If it was on the bottom, fine, but this is how we would deal with it. Now, we don't actually care about fractions with numbers we don't care about. It's only letters on the bottom that are an issue. Okay, so that's why negative exponents here. Let's deal with it here. Let's look at this. So, how do we do this one right here? This doesn't look very calculus friendly. So, I'm going to first of all rewrite. I'm going to rewrite my f of x. I'm going to be making more calculus friendly. So I'm going to say, keep in mind, it's f of x I'm doing. I'm not doing the derivative yet. I'm just rewriting this using this idea here. So it's 4 over x squared is the same thing as saying 4 times x to the power of negative 2. Now I've made it more calculus friendly. Then I do the derivative. Whoops. So I'm going to say, do the derivative. So let's do that. So f primed of x then is going to be, let's see, I take my minus 2, what do I do with it? I put it in front. What's 4 times minus 2? It's minus 8. Now x becomes 1 less, so what's minus 2 minus 1? Well, minus 2 minus 1, it turns out is minus 3. So there we go. You could, you could say you're done here. This could be the answer. You could decide to fix it up a little bit. You could say, or, um, well, see, the negative 8 is still actually on the top. Because this doesn't have a negative exponent, it's just a negative number. So negative 8 sitting on top, but x to the minus 3 is the same thing as pushing it down to the bottom and make it x cubed. This is the same thing. This is maybe easier to use. This looks a little bit more gross. It's calculus friendly, but it's not so easy to use. So this is the same as this. There you go. By the way, I put this little fun uh, joke. This is not how calculus works. Okay, just so you know, I'm going to say no. <laughs> That's not how it works. But look what they did. So they said, what if I try to do the derivative of 1 over x? So let's just, let's do it for real, okay? Can we do that? So let's do it maybe a separate example here. We'll do this one, actually. So let's try to do this example here. What is, so if f of x equals 1 over x. Can I rewrite f of x to be more calculus friendly? I sure can. I can make it as x to the, look, minus 1. 
If I do that, what's the derivative then? What's f primed of x? Well, I use that rule again. Exponent comes in front, so it becomes minus 1 times x, and this becomes 1 less, so it's minus 2. Now I could rewrite it, couldn't I? I can rewrite it as, let's see, it's minus 1 is on the top. There's no negative exponents there. It's this one with a negative exponent. So I push it down to the bottom, makes it minus 1 over x squared. This is the answer to the derivative. But look what they did here. This is awesome. They just canceled out the d's. Look, there was an x left over. And there was even a minus left over. They even actually kept a minus here. So look, they just made it minus x. This is not how it works. It's just luck. I think it's actually really funny when people do really bad math. That's not how you do it. But it turns out, well, it's not wrong. How was it? The way they did it is completely wrong. But the derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> this is why it is. All right. Keep going. So what do we do about the derivative of a sum? In other words, if we have a bunch of terms added together. No problem, just do them separately. What do I mean by that? Let's do it. Let's do dy. Well, actually first, let's rewrite. Do I have to rewrite anything? You might think, oh, I have to because I got something on the bottom. But there's no x's on the bottom. So I don't need to rewrite, it turns out. I don't have to rewrite it. It's just This is just a fraction. It's only if you have x's on the bottom that's an issue. So let's just do dy dx. Let's figure this out. Well, right now, keep in mind, this is like there's a little 1 right here just to figure that out. So let's do this one. Let's just do this term by itself. So 3 comes in front. Right? Isn't that the rule for derivatives? Just remember, already, hopefully you're memorizing it. Deriv uh, exponent comes in front. Exponent becomes 1 less. That's the useful part of it. So let's do this. Exponent goes in front. So 3 times 2 is 6 x to the power of, and what's 3 minus 1? It's 2. Boom, I'm done the first one already. Wasn't that easy. The next one, a 1 comes in front of the 4, so it just becomes a 4. By the way, there's still over 3. This just These numbers just stay there. They hang out. They don't do anything. Now it becomes x to the power of, now what's 1 minus 1? 1 minus 1 is 0, isn't it? So we'll deal with that in a second. Uh, plus, let's do the third term. 2 comes in front. 2 times 3 is 6 x to the power of, and let's see, 2 minus 1 is just 1. Now let's fix this up a little bit. What's x to the power of 0? Do you know what that is? It's just 1. So really then, the derivative becomes, let's just uh, do it then, so we have dy dx, which is a, how we write the derivative. It's 6x squared. This just disappears. You notice we just got 4 over 3 plus 6x. This is how we could write it fully. So what did we learn from this? We learned that, notice, when you have a 1 right here, it's like a, you know 1, like x to the power of 1. It just disappears. Do you notice? It's like the x just went poof, disappeared. If you think about it, that's what happens with derivatives. All the derivatives lose a power of x. Look, x cubed became x squared. Had an x, no x's. Had an x squared, became x to the 1. That's a good way to think about it, okay? Let's keep going. A little bit more complicated now. What about this one? Now, we do have an x on the bottom. And we have a number by itself. Let's see if we can figure that out. How do we deal with that? Well, let's make it more calculus friendly. So first, I'm going to rewrite. So I'm going to rewrite. This is going to be important here. I'm going to rewrite f of x. I am going to make it more calculus friendly because I got an x on the bottom here. So f of x equals, I don't want my x on the bottom. I need it to be an x on the top. So what do I do? I make it x to the power of, what's well, like a little 1 here. So it's negative 1. Now, this one has no problems with it, so 3x to the 5, I leave it. But what about the 8? What do I do there? I mean, I need the power of x. I can sort of invent one. Watch. I can kind of be really cheap. I can say, well, it's like there's an x to the power of 0. It's just that x to the power of 0 is just 1. So do you notice I'm sort of inventing it there? It's a bit cheap. You'll get used to it. You won't even bother with this. You'll realize what happens. But just so you know, technically speaking, you could say there's an x to the 0 here. All right, well, then let's now do... Let's do f prime of x. Now that we've got f of x written nicely, well, at least for calculus, it's nice. So what do we do with the exponent? This negative 1 comes in front, becomes negative 1 times 2, uh, times x to the power of, and negative 1 minus 1 gives you what? Gives you minus 2. All right, what happens here? 5 times 3 becomes 15. x to the power of, and let's see, this becomes 1 less, so it's 4. What happens here, however? The 0 comes in front of the 8. 0 times 8 just is 0. Do you notice? And 0 times anything is 0, so who cares? So what do we notice here? Let's just fix it up a little bit more, just to make it a little bit prettier to use. My minus 2 here is on the top. It's this exponent here that's on the bottom. 
So it's x squared. So then plus 15x to the fourth. This is my final answer here. I'm done. So what did we just learn here? Well, we just learned a pro tip here. We just learned that, hey, look at this. Look very carefully at what happened here. This right here is a constant. Okay, it's a constant number, right? Some sort of constant here. And what happened to the constant? It became zero. Didn't it become zero? So this is the pro tip for you, is derivative of a constant equals zero. This is a very important one. So what was I saying before? Remember I said, look at the powers of x's. They just go down. Look, x cubed became x squared. x became no x's. x squared became an x. Well, what if there's no x's? No x's becomes nothing. It disappears. That's the important part here. Let's do another one, as if that wasn't enough, right? Let's just make sure we practice that you get this. So this is actually a physics one. Um, this is the um, displacement versus time. Uh, but it turns out we can deal with it just as an equation. So what I'm asking for, what's the derivative of displacement? Which, uh, Depending on if you need it or not, if you take physics, you'll need to know this. This is the velocity I'm asking for. I'm basically asking for, what's the speed here? Um, but we don't need to worry about that. Let's just do s primed of t. Or in other words, I can say, uh, yeah, ds dt. I can say it that way. So ds dt is going to be, well, it's written calculus friendly, actually. The 2 comes in front of the minus 4.9. Well, minus 4.9 times 2 is going to be minus 9.8 times t to the power of, and 2 minus 1 is just 1, so there we go, plus, now this one here is like a little 1 in front, so 1 times 3 just becomes 3. This becomes t to the power of 1 minus 1, which is 0. And what happens to the minus 5? It just disappears. It just becomes 0. So what do we do here then, finally? We can say, ah, well then ds dt is going to be, let's see here, it's going to be minus 9.8t uh, plus, and what's t to the 0, by the way? Anything to the 0 is just 1, so it's just plus 3. And this disappears. So there we go, we're done. By the way, in case you're a physicist and you want to know about this, what have I just done? Um, I've essentially just shown you this equation. Um, you know, your equations of motion here, v equals u plus at, that's what we've just done. Look, this is this is essentially v. This right here is 9.81 is actually a. This is t, and this is your initial speed, right? Because this is your speed uh, when t is 0. So this is, turns out this is u. So this is actually at plus You don't need this. If you're not a physicist, don't worry about it. Actually, don't worry about it, even if you are a physicist. This is just, we just mathematically found this. So to see how we could actually solve this, isn't that kind of cool?